Hey everyone, just a couple of things here before we get into it. The first is that I know this is longer than what we're used to on this channel, but the length is worth it. I promise this is the most behind the scenes, pull back the curtain tour I've ever experienced in my entire life. And I wanted you guys to get that full effect. The second thing is that it was super windy when we went there. So there is a bit of a wind issue sometimes throughout the video. You can still hear us talk, but it is a little windy, just a heads up on that. And the third thing I'd want to do is just say thank you to my younger brother, Evan, for doing all the camera work he did a fantastic job my lovely girlfriend jess for coming along directing producing did a fantastic job and of course brendan black the tour guide of this video and the reason we were able to come to polar park and do this video for you guys so thank you brendan thank you evan and thank you jess if you guys do enjoy this video, let me know in the comment section down below because I'd love to do more stuff like this for you, but I'm not going to know whether you guys like it or not if you don't leave a comment in the comment section. So thank you all very much for clicking on this one. Let's get into it. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to Red Sea Radio. My name is Corbin, and as you can tell, we are not in the studio today. This is a special edition of Red Sea Radio because we are live at Polar Park. We are getting a very special inside look at what makes Polar Park one of the best minor league stadiums in all of baseball. We're going to head on side in just a couple of minutes, but before we do, thank you all very much for clicking on this one. Let's head inside and get into this. So we're now in Polar Park. We are joined by Brendan Black. You guys may recognize him from Woosocks Insider, but he does a whole lot more than that. He's the manager of Ballpark Entertainment here, and he's going to be our tour guide today. So, Brendan, how you doing? I'm doing well. Glad to have you guys out. Yeah. So what are we doing on our first sort of leg of the tour here? So the first leg of the tour, we're just here in the main concourse area where um, if you have a general mission ticket, the ticket down in, in the bowl, this is where you can kind of roam around the park. You can go from here all the way out to behind the, the uh, batter's eye and you can uh, circumnavigate the ballpark as Do Dr. Charles likes to call it. So, so yeah, we'll be starting here and then we'll make our way up to the Worcester Wall. Awesome, let's get into it. things about uh, here is we have these little um, golf carts here. This is one's covered up here. We have uh, three more that are over there. So any fans who come to the park, um, if you park somewhere that you're a little further away from the park, we have these running uh, almost all through the game and pre-game, really? post-game. So you get a free shuttle ride to and from your car, That's which is awesome. pretty nice. <laughs> a kind of cool feature about um, the park is that one, not only do we try to like make it as Worcester as possible, as you can see, there's Wonder Bar Pizza. It's a Worcester staple. There's Coney Island hot dogs are sold um, over on the third base side, and then also you'll notice the uh, the sausage guy who is always out on uh, yeah. uh, out in front of Fenway. So he has his own stand here. And then we got table talk pies and all that. It's uh, it's really cool. It's very very uh, Worcester centric, obviously, and they tried to bring as much of that into the ballpark. So that's awesome. So right here, this is our this is our craft corner. Once again, um, you know it's a everything's Worcester here. We got Greater Good uh, beer that's served from right here. It's served here and then also throughout the park. Watrusa Brewery, obviously Sam Adams can't go wrong with that. Um, it's kind of a cool little area that's just you know it's it's open to the uh, public on a lot of nights. Other nights we have parties that will come and they'll rent out this whole area. But you get to sit right on top of the. Uh, the bullpen here, the Woo Sox bullpen. Um, is that ever a problem? Uh, you know, I don't think it's, it hasn't been a problem yet. Um, but, you know, this is, you're, you're right on top of them here. Yeah. So, you know, there's, there's definitely some fanfare as you're sitting uh, 
as you're sitting here, area gets lined up with kids and the pitchers and the guys are all great and they always want to be interacting with everyone. So it's, it's cool. It's, it's uh, you know, kind of the beauty of a minor league ballpark is you're able to be close to everything. And that was one of the big things with Polar Park is that even though we aren't anywhere near, we're actually kind of near the, the, the bottom of the total attendance that we can have or total capacity of the ballpark. Um, but that being said, we made sure, or I say we as if I built the ballpark, um, we made sure while building it that everything was, you know, kind of tight and close together so you feel like you're on top of the field. And then also that, yeah. you know, when you have a crowd in here, it's like you really get that environment. You really feel it, um, you know, it gets loud and uh, it's, it's a great place to play. And I know last year you guys actually had the record for most attendance on a minor league ballpark, right? Mm -hmm. So what is sort of like the average night kind of look like in terms of attendance here? So, you know, it's funny because with New England weather, it is uh, it is tough. Point. But um, we do uh, – I forget what the actual average number we had, but I know we were only one of three teams last year out of all minor league baseball, which is 120 teams. We were only one of three teams to eclipse 500,000 fans over the wow. course of the, uh, the season. The cool thing about that is that's comparative to – cities like nashville and las vegas and yeah. like cities that completely uh like their their uh population is double triple uh the size of worcester so it just kind of goes to show the uh how much the fans have really taken to it so So 2021 uh, in, was our inaugural season, and if you were to look at this ballpark from 2021 to now, uh, there is just a world of difference. Um, one of the main things that we actually uh, did during the middle of last season is this video board right here was not there before. Um, we actually just had that uh, scoreboard was pushed over and was in the spot that it is now, so fans were asking, so ownership, um, senior management listen to the fans they always listen to the fans about what it is so we put up another video board right here um, and then we have our what we call where the welcome to polar park we call that our our pitchers board or right center field board where uh, the pitchers um, statistics and speed and all the like pitch speed and that kind of stuff will be displayed yeah. during so this is kind of like the honorary sort of green monster type exactly yeah so they didn't want to make, uh, you know, another JetBlue park that, uh, you know, is basically a replica of Fenway in a different area. We wanted to have some of the same features, some of the same feel of Fenway. And, you know, Fenway is, uh, you're very close in on everything. And that's one of the feels we really wanted to, to have here. Um, and so then, you know, yeah, we did. There were a couple of uh, ideas, I think, that were taken and uh, made perfect for Worcester here. So this is the Worcester wall. Ah. Uh, and uh, I think this would be one of the spots that I would probably uh, watch a game from. A little bit of a jet stream right here. So you get a lot of, uh, a lot of home runs up here. Um, but, yeah, it's a really awesome place to catch a game. And, um, you know, you'll see almost any time that there's people in the park that the Worcester Wall will be filled up because, sure. I mean, this is just such an awesome place. One of the biggest things I think a lot of people go to minor league games for, aside from obviously seeing, you know, future stars of their favorite MLB team, is just the price difference. So could you explain a little bit, sort of, I don't know if you have an idea as to what it is to sit on the Monster at Fenway compared to here? Yeah, I don't know the exact prices of the Monster. I know that it will absolutely cost uh, way more. I would probably say you could get six Worcester Wall tickets for one Green Monster ticket, maybe yeah. even more. Uh, I don't. I think the price is it's it's around twenty twenty one dollars to sit right here. Um, to get into the ballpark uh, is nine dollars. Yeah. You know, and the nine dollar ticket is what we call a Woo Sox Loop ticket, and so the loop is what I've been talking about. You're able to walk around if a seat doesn't have a seat number on it, if it's not designated for a uh, reserve seat, then that's an open seat for you to sit in. So just to reiterate, nine dollars gets you into the park. Nine dollars allows you to walk around the entire stadium, and nine dollars allows you to sit anywhere there isn't a seat number. Just wanted to make sure that was clear. <laughs> It is like 
a minefield out here. You'll just be like walking around and like, if you don't keep your eye on the field, you have to be looking because like it was like my first or second day that I was actually here and I'm walking out here, taking it all in. And I think it was, uh, I forgot who the player was, but I was just walking right up here and heard the crack of the bat, like whatever, baseball feel, that's what happens, ball just like, right in front of me and it was just like and so they watch them out here especially during batting practice and as we walk over here towards summit street there uh, i remember tristan casas last year hitting batting practice and hitting them clear over our like boundary of the ballpark out here so completely out of the ballpark down onto summit street and it rolled all the way down to the banner which is the bar that is about 500 yards that way and so there's just a ball sitting in the crosswalk across the street and this ballpark is kind of sunken in almost to uh to it you can see like the retaining wall uh next to the the train track back there so the footprint like the visual footprint that the uh, ballpark has is very minimal um because of the city uh worcester is a city of city of seven hills um and so we're kind of like built into one of these like little valleys here the cool part about this is right now um the ballpark is technically closed or isn't um the gates haven't opened but this area is all free to the public to just walk and you can walk around i think you guys said you were walking around yeah. earlier so but then during the games we'll actually have uh barriers that go right here so that once you get into the ballpark these doors will be open, and this whole area is uh, open to anyone who has a ticket. So you can come out here, walk out here. Wormtown has their little uh, brewery stand over here. We have the Sherwood's Diner. And when we have a, um, we do Throwback Thursdays. When we have a Throwback Thursday, we will have, you know, former Red Sox uh, players come in. Yesterday, we had Tom Gordon, Flash Gordon come in. We had Johnny Gomes. A couple weeks ago, Orlando Cabrera has made it, and so wow. during innings three through six, they'll sit in the in the Sherwood Diner over there, and uh, fans can go meet them, get pictures, get autographs, and that kind of stuff. So, and that's actually a uh, an old diner car that used to be fully operational as a diner here in Worcester, and oh, the wow. team uh, purchased it, refurbished it, and then put it here out on Summit Street. So yeah, we're now down here on uh, on field level, and first thing you'll notice about this field is it is meticulously cared for. Uh, the grounds crew here is incredible. Um, Elliot right out there, he is our uh, head grounds crew. He's a field uh, supervisor. He actually, um, him and his crew, our first season here, they won uh, minor league grounds crew of the year so oh, for wow. their playing surface which is pretty impressive so it is. what time do they normally get here to get start getting going on you know game days <laughs> it's a great question I, I don't think these guys leave um because there are times where when i leave i never turn off the lights here because they're on the field and wow. they're still preparing for the next day so when they leave the park they're the ones who actually turn off the lights so i leave at 11 o'clock it's like you know they're probably still out here for another couple of hours and then the turnaround for them is incredibly fast. They have to get out here and, you know, that's all depending on the weather and all that kind of stuff. So if all of a sudden they see that they have a window to work on the field at 5 a.m., they'll be here at 5 a.m. I feel like some of the most underrated workers in the baseball industry are the guys who take care of the field. Absolutely. Chad Tracy, who's manager of the Woo Sox, said that when a player makes an error in the field, say a player bobbles, bobbles a ball at shortstop or something like that, Elliot will text him and be like, was that the field or was that the player? That is awesome. <laughs> it's incredible. And I think there is a lot of teams that would love to do that. Yeah, and, uh, sure. and so in almost every single one of the times, it's the player. But, <laughs> right. yeah. If I was the player, I'd say field every single time. Every single yeah. time, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
So yeah, we're right now, this is the away uh, dugout. And the only really reason why I'm able to come in here is because this is where one of our camera spots are. So we have, um, for our cameras, we have seven uh, operated, uh, like human operated cameras. So we have one down here, which is considered our, our low third. One of the things that Larry Lucchino, principal owner of the team, uh, wanted was that, um, wanted to make sure that when you watch a Red Sox game, then you flip to a Blue Sox game, that those games, you know, outside of the things we can't control, that he wants those to feel like you're watching the same product. And we feel we've gotten, you know, pretty close to that. We always have yes. room for improvement and that kind of stuff, but we pride ourselves on being able to, you know, put on a game and if you're too far away from the TV, you don't know if it's a <laughs> Sox game or a, a Woo Sox game. Camera will be set up right here. It's actually so like we, it's all the way tucked in this corner and so if you were to look down here during a game the lens actually sticks out into the field of play a little bit and uh and that's so that we can get the you know that side angle of a, of a lefty batter or we can get the uh side angle of a, a righty pitcher and be able to see them you know see their uh, uniform see the front of it so it's a really cool uh spot to be it's also um you got to keep your head on the swivel yeah, yeah because we <laughs> and just last week we had one of our uh, team photographers take one off the hip she was okay she's fine <laughs> We are now out on the berm. Um, the berm refers to the, the grass area here. This is part of like the Woo Sox loop. Behind us over this uh, direction is uh, the fan deck, which is new for this year. It's actually a, um, it's technically a, a temporary thing. It'll be here for this whole season. We have the area behind the scoreboard back here. It's got some nice little lights and areas. It's a nice grass area. Um, it's called the Eighth Hill, Worcester City of seven hills in about a couple hours or so there'll be a band that plays out there we switch up uh i think it's a, a band from natick this time which makes sense um but yeah uh every game we have a different uh band that plays out here and you know just plays up until the game time uh to kind of add some liveliness to it out here um and we're also standing right next to the diamond chevrolet uh target so if a player if a woo Sox player hits that target it initiates uh a raffle for a truck for a fan so a fan uh -huh. could win that truck has that ever happened um it has not but i think 2021 jet bandy former woo Sox catcher hit it into the bed of the truck uh -huh. without hitting the target and in 2000 i think it was 2021 as well Maybe last year we're all mixed together, but Johan Miesis um, hit a home run that took one hop onto the uh, pavement here, jumped right up, and landed on a train. Really? And that train, uh, th this train track right here goes all the way to Chicago, so that's where he said the longest home run ever hit here is currently in Chicago. To me, there's nothing more minor league baseball than a train running right behind the field. It just adds that whole dynamic. And then another really cool feature is the duck boat, where we can actually go up into the duck boat, and a lot of the times that is open for general admission seating. Wow. And so, what did you know, one of our Woosock shuttles is coming on by right now. <laughs> So we're up on the Hanover deck right now. It's another one of these like party spots or if uh, a party doesn't have this rented out, it opens up to the Woo Sox loop for those uh, general admission tickets. But it's again, just another like really cool look at this park.
so Polar Park has over a hundred different food options that you can have in the park, which blows any other minor league uh, ballpark out of the water. And in addition to that, we have what is called Woosox Farms, which out here we actually have a lot of the herbs and spices and things that they will use to create the food will be grown right here, right at Polar Park, which is really incredible. Um, and you know, it just adds a whole nother, you know, a whole nother space to this park. And I think people are rightly surprised every single time they see this back here. Um, and it's just, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. And it's another one of those kind of just innovative features that they yeah. brought into the park. Can't believe we just walked by our brand new our brand new organ here at Polar Park, so that we can um, serenade our crowd with some incredible um, organ playing. So we'll have uh, a organist of the day, a mystery organist of the day, come here and play seventh inning stretch of that kind of stuff, and it's it's really cool because you know it's it's the coolest thing in the world. It's a full blown organ. So right here we are now in the TV broadcast booth. This is where we will, where we broadcast all of our games right now. This is set up for our uh, intros here for our broadcast. So they come up here, they will shoot our, our opens where they can talk about what happened with the players like previously and then we bring this uh, screen back around this way. And then this is where they call the game from. And yeah, this is their setup. So they have their monitors right here, which will show what's on the broadcast. Um, and then these are our their buttons. It's literally, if you have to cough, you hold down cough and it just mutes your mic. You have your talk back mics. So your talk back is, so your director is able to talk to you at all times. They can hear you at all times. Um, but then when they want to talk directly to you, they can hold this down you can talk through your mic and it won't go to the broadcast. It will just talk to your uh, director, your producer. So extremely professional setup. Yeah. Um, so this is where TV is. Uh, the radio booth is right there. So we have a home radio, home TV. Um, and then on the other side over here is our um, away radio. So. Nice. You can see right behind here, these are four of our broadcast cameras. So we were just down in camera one area. So this is actually camera five. This is one of our low cameras. You can see all the dirt on it from being on the field level. But so this is a setup for uh, one of our normal cameras. So this is, uh, yeah, this is, we have um, five of these uh, exact camera setups right here. Like I said before, see right here, one, two. Those are two baseballs with an incredible tape job keeping it together. <laughs> um, but yeah, you can see this thing takes beatings and somehow this camera still operates. We didn't take any hits um, during the game when it happened, but, uh, and our camera operator came out unscathed, so we won that battle. But this is, my favorite because this one goes out in center field and if you can't tell you try to keep it secure yeah, just a little bit because that's what it looks like whoa so same exact camera body as the other ones a slightly larger lens yeah, so this <laughs> this lens, uh, so this camera is out in center field. We call it our camera four. Um, this thing is an absolute mammoth. Has a whole different tripod system. Um, this lens right here. Take away the body, just remove the lens. You're looking at around seventy five, eighty thousand dollars for just the lens. The lens. <laughs> that is. Uh... Keep that one as far away as possible from getting hit. Yeah, yeah. Maybe at 10,000 subscribers you can get one. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
But yeah, so the way I explain this to everyone um, is the way our control room operates is we, every single night, we have two shows that run out of here simultaneously. So we have our show that's happening for everyone who is in the ballpark. Um, and then we have our show for everyone who is at home. So these two rows right here um, facing the field are in-game entertainment. Um, and then that back row uh, over there is where our Nesson broadcast, uh, that's where it's all produced from. Wow. So the noise you hear are our servers. So these big servers back here are what allows us to um, one, broadcast these games. Two, run every single one of our equipment, cameras, everything. The power comes up here. All of it's fed up here. And then it, you know, we're able to shoot that back out to wherever we need it to be. It's cold in this room because those servers, it's like if you ever used your you know, 2005 MacBook for too long and all of a sudden you feel like you could cook an egg on it because it gets so hot, that's the same thing that's happened here. Essentially what these racks are are just racks of computers. So you hear all that going, you can hear fans like buzzing and whizzing, it's pushing out all the heat. If we weren't to have this room proper, properly ventilated and kept cool, those would overheat, automatically shut down, or overheat to the point of actual like melting, where like they can get that hot where it can create, and so that's obviously a bigger issue than just <laughs> losing a broadcast. Uh, the way this works is it's essentially what we have on the in-game side is mirrored for the broadcast side. Uh, our DJ sits right here, has two separate screens here, and every time we throw a strikeout, we do the Ric Flair. Woo! So like uh, the W on this key will just automatically hit whoop. So you can like go, and it'll just this thing called click effects, and click effects allows you to have all this music in there. Allows you to have any kind of um, you know sound effects, stomp claps, uh, like all those different stuff, so that you can quickly be producing a game, and then you have we have a second. Uh, set of, of click effects on this side. So we actually have two computers running at once, two different um, channels that uh, we can send music out of. Right here, and this is my multi-viewer. So multi-viewer, um, you can see right here, so they're all blacked out right now, but these are our cameras. So uh, right now, these are our two uh, remote controlled cameras. So we have what we call Berm, uh, excuse me. So these are our two remote controlled. This is Berm, this is Summit. So these are two cameras that we can I can control from right here. So let me actually go over to this is our technical director. This so technical director um, takes direction from me. So if I were to come to him and I were to say, "All right, um, get ready for beauty cam." So beauty's right here, up here. You can see beauty cam in preview. You can see it on my multi viewer as well. We'll see the same thing here. So then. Um, you know, these are all of our cameras that we have on this row. So you hold down shift. Now I have my berm camera here. So now I can ask, I'm like, okay, can I see Summit? Let me see Summit in preview. They can take Summit in preview. Say, let me see berm in preview. Okay, ready, berm. And let's fade into berm. So now if I were to do this, so that fades it into program right here. So on a normal uh, program would mirror right up onto our big screen there. When the game's being played, we're, it's not like football where you can show live right. play. You have to have a static image on the boards because you can't have a batter distracted, you can't have a pitcher distracted, like, just strictly out of like safety reasons and those type of things. So I don't have access to those cameras, but I do have access to this one. So if you see right here, I can go ahead and let's see. Let's go say hi to us. So as it gets closer, it'll be... A little shaky because it's windy out, but I'll pull it out a little bit. So, can you see me on there? Yeah. So, we're able to like reach all around the park and see different areas in there. With the kiss cams and stuff, how do you find couple? Are you just using that and just searching around, or is it so, kind of predetermined? So during uh, so once our broadcast goes to break, so I'm able to go and look in. So this is broadcast program. Uh, this is cable, which sometimes can be the same thing, but broadcast program right here. I see this go to commercial. I know that their cameras are now clear. So now I can pop onto my channel A and go, all right, cameras, it's Kiss Cam. And then it's up to the camera people to just, they just start shooting in. And then I'll sit here 
and working with the technical director, I'll be like, okay, uh, ready camera five, take camera five, ready three, take three. And so I'm just looking to see who's on here, who's going to give us like the best stuff that we can put up on there. So yeah. uh, it's, and you know, but then every once in a while I can pop on and be like, uh, camera two, go to the Worcester wall, go to the Worcester wall. And so then they can go and they can push it there and then we can go and take that. Um, on, on, on the screen. So, and then you'll see right here, Ben DeCastro, our uh, PA announcer will have his script every single game. This is uh, last night's game. Every single game we have a full script um, for, this is the pregame show. The pregame is pretty long and then we get into the actual game itself and you can see there's just some of his notes from last night, but you can see all of the things are all scripted out in here and it's down to the minute. You can see that we have to make sure we hit all these marks in that by the time we get to first pitch, 6.45, we just got to make sure that we hit every single one of these marks leading up to it. Moving down one, that is our score. So score pad will sit here. Then he pops over onto this actual um, uh, software over here, which isn't set up right now, but he actually will go into here um, and he then will score the game from within this system here which then sends all of these stats, gets sent to our broadcast, to MILB.com. So if you're ever watching, you know, if you're following along a, a game and you're watching just like that uh, MLB, like game day thing where you're not watching the game, you're just seeing who's up, what the pitch is, that, that's all being fed from really? this system. So, um, and this also, this is the reason why when you're watching a broadcast, um, you know, the first time the batter comes up, it will show his season stats. Next time he comes up, um, it will automatically populate whatever um, that batter had done previously. So if he struck out the first time, he'll be 0 for 1. If he gets a single in his next at bat, he'll be 1 for 2. And the matrix set up in that system knows to show that he has one single rather than one strikeout. So you'll see 1 for 2 with a single. So not only does this run what we see kind of out there, it runs what we see on MILB. It shows what we see on the Jumbotrons. That's pretty impressive. It's just one thing. It's just one thing. Uh, it is a um, underappreciated job because when it's done right, you're like, okay, yeah, that's right. That's the count. When it's done wrong, you're like, well, that's not the count. What's happening here? Why is it happening? When that's like, you know, and that's the tough part about this. And a lot of that also is kind of just in general when you come to a ballpark and you see everything is up and working and operating, you're like, yeah, well, that's the ballpark. That's what it's supposed to do. Right. But behind the scenes, we're all sitting back here like freaking out because we took a wrong transition and we did this, do that, and we're the only people in the whole ballpark that's going to notice that stuff. So right. it's, uh, it, it is interesting, but it's also good to know that this is a person. This is someone who is trying their best to get it right. Uh, and. 99.9% .9 of the time they are. It's an incredibly impressive uh, and, and a, a stressful job, especially when you start dealing with rundowns and substitutions and the team scores 10 runs in an inning and they're swapping players out. It's, it gets very hectic. But yeah, and then that's my little nook over there where I do a bunch of my editing and that's where, you know, I create a lot of graphics and videos and things like that. But yeah, so this is our control room. It is insane the amount of just pure production that people don't like i never realized all this work goes into you know just the replays and the throwing your birthday up on the jumbotron yep. yeah it's crazy yeah i had no idea it took this much oh, this yeah. much uh production yeah it's uh it's really cool i mean like um when this place is up and running every single one of these seats is taken there's a couple of people walking around it's a very busy room but it's uh you know it can get loud but you know uh for the majority of the game it's everyone's keyed in everyone's knows what their role is and like how we can put on the best show and like you know really finding our stride at this point and it's uh you know it's it's very cool to be able to you know put on this kind of a show and be able to you know handle things even from just like you know again from putting a birthday message up to i 
control the lights in here. So like a guy hits a home run, I'm the person pressing the button that is gonna show our flashing lights and that kind of stuff. So every tiny little feature of the ballpark that uh, is actively changing and is a part of like the entertainment process comes from up here. So it is really cool. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like the central hub, the brain of the operations, exactly. if you will. Yeah, exactly. I wouldn't call myself the brains of the operation, but uh, but yeah, we have an incredible team up here who uh, we put on as good of shows as we can. We've got some really good feedback, so it's cool. But yeah, so uh, thought we'd wrap it up the tour in here because I think this is a really cool spot. Not only, I mean, this is one of our suites, but this is the principal owner. This is Larry Lucchino's suites, if you couldn't tell by uh, the hardware that he has in here. Um, and so when Larry comes to his games, this is where he'll uh, watch it from and he'll have his guests come up here. Um, the suites are fully catered, so you'll see this this row will be set up with all the food that you could imagine. You have um, wait staff will come in here throughout the game. Um, we have I think 22 suites in total. You know we are a minor league ballpark, but we have the amenities of a major league ballpark, and this is you know obviously one of them. <laughs> Some pretty cool stuff in here. Yeah, I mean, the it, trophies, all the autographed pictures. Yep. Yeah. It's, uh, it's something to see, definitely. All right, we've officially made our way through almost the entirety of Polar Park. This was an incredible experience, Brendan. Thank you so much for allowing us to come in here and really see kind of everything that goes on in just one singular pitch or one singular at-bat during a game. You guys got to see one of the best minor league ballparks in all of America.